Hey, what is going on guys? Nick Heron here with Fantasy Football Facts, bringing you guys my top five favorite sleeper running backs for the 2018 fantasy football season. These are all guys who are going in the 10th round or later in 12-team PPR fantasy drafts. So these are guys that you can get real late in your drafts that can potentially give you some value. Now, before I get into this, I want to also mention that I do have a link to my Google spreadsheet of fantasy football rankings for the 2018 season in the description below. So be sure to check that one out. And I want to hear from you guys in the comments section below if there are any other running backs that you guys are looking for late in drafts that can help out some other players as well. Now, let's describe what I'm talking about with sleepers. These are guys that have the upside to potentially produce as what running back three, running back two, or running back one, and if everything kind of breaks the correct way anyway, uh, in the 2018 season. They're not necessarily guys that have great floors. I understand, typically with fantasy football, we want to draft guys that have good floors. But at the end of your draft, what you're really shooting for is the upside. So I'm not interested in guys like, let's say, a Theo Riddick or somebody like that who's going to produce, you know, five, six, seven points a week. I mean, yeah, there's some value to that. But at the same time, I would rather have a guy who's going to produce nothing. But when the guy in front of him goes down, then he can step in and potentially produce 12 to 15 points a week for me because I know I'm not going to play him when he's not set up to, to produce, so I don't have to worry about that. But when he is out there and when he is getting touches, I want him in my lineup because he can do more. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. These are guys that have, in my opinion, a lot more upside. So that's what we're really looking for late in the drafts. With that said, let's hop into it. The first running back that we're going to be talking about is actually a guy that I think has a chance to start in week one, and that's Jordan Wilkins of the Indianapolis Colts. Currently going as the running back 51 in the 12th round of fantasy drafts. I have him ranked as, as my number 44 running back overall in PPR formats. Now, one thing I will say is I'm not a huge fan of the talent of Jordan Wilkins. He's not a great athlete. He wasn't particularly productive in college. And it's just, he's just okay. He's just a guy, in my opinion. But just a guy in that Indianapolis Colts offense that's supposed to be at least vastly improved this season could have some serious value. Andrew Luck, obviously, is the quarterback. They invested heavily in their offensive line early in the draft. There is fantasy production to be had in this backfield. And I really, really think that Jordan Wilkins is a guy that could potentially break out this season and be a fantasy football workhorse. We see right now Marlon Mack, supposed to be their starter, is not currently practicing. He's not ready to play in week one. And if he's not ready to play in week one and Jordan Wilkins is ready to play in week one, he's going to start over Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines might get some passing down work, but Jordan Wilkins is going to be out there for the majority of snaps. And if that happens, he has the possibility of getting touchdowns. He has the possibility of getting decent rushing yards, possibly some catches. That is the type of production that you can get as a running back too and put that into your lineup and be very, very excited about it. And I really think that that's what Jordan Wilkins could give you early in the season if Marlon Mack is not ready to go. And when Marlon Mack gets back onto the field, let's say it's week two, week three, if Jordan Wilkins looked good, they might not go back to Marlon Mack. They weren't particularly excited about him last year. Frank Gore got plenty of touches in that backfield. So obviously they're not super convinced that Marlon Mack's the guy going forward. I do have Marlon Mack actually ranked ahead of Jordan Wilkins, but I think where Jordan Wilkins is going right now in fantasy drafts, all the way down there, like I said, in the 12th round, there just isn't much more value that you can pull out of this position than a guy like Jordan Wilkins. I really think he has a good possibility of producing early this season and giving you quality fantasy football production, at least for the first couple of weeks where we see what happens. And then maybe you have another guy like an Aaron Jones or somebody like that that's coming back from suspension. You put them in your lineup if, if Wilkins doesn't work out. But I like him early in the, in the season, certainly. Next on the list, Giovanni Bernard of the Cincinnati Bengals, currently going as the running back 50, also in the 12th round of fantasy drafts. I have him ranked as my number 43 running back. Now, look, I understand he's been in the league for a few years right now. It seems like he's been there for a very long time in Cincinnati and hasn't really done a whole lot. But look, this is a guy that was actually more productive on a per-touch basis last year than Joe Mixon. We don't really think about that, but he was. And this is also a guy that averages 46 catches per season throughout his career. And he's still 26 years old. He's young. He has plenty of tread left on the tires if given the opportunity. Now, I don't think he's going to start over Joe Mixon. I have Joe Mixon actually as ranked about as high as anybody right now in the fantasy football industry. So I think that, obviously, I'm, I'm expecting Joe Mixon to be the guy 
However, I also expect that Giovanni Bernard is going to produce some value at least. I think he's going to give you three, maybe four catches a week. And I think that that gives you some serious upside as well because if he doesn't do anything in the running game at all, at least he's given you a little bit in that, that passing game for the floor. And then if Joe Mixon does go down, obviously he's going to be able to step in and produce pretty good numbers like he did last year. He's one of the best handcuffs in fantasy football, but he also has some standalone value, and that's pretty rare, especially where he's going down here in the 12th round in PPR formats. Snag him up in those PPR formats, guys. If you miss out on running backs early, or if you need somebody that can just give you that upside late in your draft, Gio Bernard is a really good option. Bilal Powell is the next guy on the list. Running back for the New York Jets, he also has been with that team for a few years, and we haven't seen him break out yet, but he's had some decent seasons at least. Currently going as the running back number 46 in fantasy drafts in the 11th round. I have him ranked as my number 45 running back, so right, just right around where he's currently going. However, the thing that I would say is that I like him a lot better than the other guys that are going in that range. I think he has a lot more upside, and I think he's a guy that could potentially give you running back two numbers if everything breaks the right way for him. I don't expect the Jets to be a good offense this season, and with that said, I expect them to have to pass a lot. And if they're going to pass a lot, who do you want to have out there? A guy like Isaiah Crowell, who's just a between-the-tackles grinder, or do you want a guy that can catch passes? I want a guy that can catch passes. Bilal Powell can catch passes. He didn't quite do it too much last year. I think there were a lot of different extenuating circumstances with that, potentially not fully healthy, things like that. But the previous two seasons, he combined for 105 catches. That's a lot of catches for a running back. Not many guys are producing 50 catches a season, and Bilal Powell can give you that. He also has the possibility of giving you some decent rushing yardage. He's not a guy that only gets catches like a a Theo Riddick or even a Duke Johnson or somebody like that. He does carry the ball as well. He had 900 total yards of offense last year in 2017 in what was a bad offense where he was splitting touches. I mean, it really was not a good situation, and I think that he has more upside this year than Isaiah Crowell. So I am currently ranking him ahead of Crowell. I don't love this New York Jets offense, like I said, but I think that Bilal Powell is probably going a little too low for where he could potentially finish for you. Next, we have two guys who are, in my opinion, pure handcuffs. Okay, So these guys are not players that we're really even thinking about touching or doing anything with unless the starter in front of them goes down. And the first one of those is rookie running back John Kelly of the Los Angeles Rams. Now, John Kelly obviously plays behind Todd Gurley. He's currently going as the running back 81. I have him ranked at running back 66. He's going undrafted in most formats, 16th round. I mean, he's basically just a throwaway player. A poor athlete, a player who has looked good in preseason, though, so there is some value to that. One thing that I would say is that if Todd Gurley does go down, I don't think there's much of a question right now. John Kelly has certainly played his way into being the RB2 there, and that offense should continue to be at least pretty decent with Todd Gurley being out. Todd Gurley does have an injury history, so we are a little bit worried about that, and I don't think it's a bad idea to potentially handcuff him to Todd Gurley if you're somebody that drafts him, you know, and obviously with your first pick. And if you get John Kelly real late in your draft, if you're in a deep format, you know, it's the 15th round or something like that, go ahead and snag up John Kelly. You lock up that Los Angeles backfield, and at least you know if if, uh, Todd Gurley does go down, you can get John Kelly in there, and you're not going to take, you know, a gigantic step back. You're going to go from a running back one to a running back two for sure, but still, John Kelly can give you some sort of production, and, and that's pretty valuable. So I certainly would look at him uh, as a guy late in your draft who could potentially give you some good upside. The other one that I really like that's currently a handcuff, Rod Smith of the Dallas Cowboys, obviously playing behind Ezekiel Elliott. We know Ezekiel Elliott's had off-field problems before. We know that he's had a couple of little injuries here and there, nothing substantial, but certainly is a player that we want to, to handcuff potentially, especially when the handcuff has actually looked pretty good on the field. And Rod Smith looked pretty good when Ezekiel Elliott was out. All things considered, he didn't get all the touches or anything like that, but this year I expect that he is going to be that pure handcuff for Ezekiel Elliott. And I don't think there are many of those guys that are in a good offense for rushing the football. Dallas's offensive line, if they're healthy, one of the best, if not the best, in the entire league. And so if he steps in and he is able to get plenty of uh, a bunch of touches in that in that backfield, he has some value almost certainly. Last year, six games Ezekiel Elliott was out. Rod Smith scored five touchdowns. Now, obviously, we don't expect anything like that to continue, but even if he gets half that many, even if he only gets three touchdowns in six games, that's still a pretty good pace. That would give you eight touchdowns on the season if he was out there for all 16. So that's a pretty good value. Obviously, he can catch passes as well. We've seen that. 
Um, he could be a high-end running back two or even potentially a low-end running back one if Dallas' offense is better than we expect it to be in fantasy formats if Ezekiel Elliott goes down. So just like John Kelly, I like Rod Smith. I actually like Rod Smith maybe just slightly better than John Kelly uh, as far as a pure handcuff, but both of these players are players that you really want to get late in your draft if you have deep formats. Uh, but other than that, pretty much only in dynasty formats for these guys. Don't draft them if you're in a standard league where you only have 15 rounds. They're really not valuable enough to do that. But they're players you want to keep an eye on either way in case one of your players does go down. So with that said, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I would really appreciate it. Again, my rankings are in the description below. You can go check those out. I'll be doing quarterbacks and tight end sleepers here in the next day or two. So be sure to stop on back for that stuff as well. Wide receivers were earlier. So make sure you go check out that video as well. Hopefully you guys will uh, love all this content that we're putting out and it will help you in your fantasy football drafts. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.